Hey, welcome everybody to. Yeah. Oh, there we go again. We have. <laughs> this is what happens when we keep these windows up. All right. So, all right. Welcome everybody to Wall Street Reporters' next Super Stock live stream, May sixth. We have back with us Liquid Avatar, LQID uh, on the CSC TRWRF over the counter. David Lukacs, CEO. David, welcome back. Thanks, Jack. Great to be here as always. Uh, David, uh, you know, I see that you're getting more, more of the collectibles. The toys are piling up. We're going to be talking about how that fits in. Actually, it fits into one of the themes that you have with the NFTs. So you're, yeah. which you're, 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 you're actually uniquely qualified to be in the NFT space. And we'll, we'll, we'll get into all that stuff. So for anybody that's just joining our goal at the next Superstock live stream, is to bring you those stocks which have that 10x to 100x upside potential. So these are companies going after three things. One, multi-billion dollar market opportunities. Two, they're at a key inflection point right now in their development phase. So really they're ready for massive revenue growth. And three, there's multiple catalysts, multiple catalysts in place which can drive that stock price appreciation. Uh, and uh, over the last 18 months, we've seen already seven of those companies that we've had in this universe have increased anywhere from 10x, 20x, even a 50x, and the way too many to list, which have been you know doubles, triples, 5x, or whatever. And uh, even even Liquid Avatar actually started off. We actually I think we're up 4x since the introduction and, until the market correction, which is it's been going on. So, so we really need to find out today. We're going to find out if Liquid Avatar is going to bounce back on that road to greatness, to being that 10 bagger that everybody in our audience is looking for. So, uh, David, you know, I, I think what we should do is, you know, I was just actually thinking that really, you know, Liquid Avatar is, I mean, you have a couple of very interesting growth initiatives you're doing, and but there is a really kind of like an underlying theme with everything from the NFTs to, to the digital identity and everything. But, you know, really liquid. I mean, essentially, this is, this is a company that you're at the intersection of, you know, the biggest themes in the market right now. I mean, these are like mega, mega, you know, trend waves. So ranging from the NFTs, digital identity, all that stuff. So I, I think we should kind of unpack it, give people an update on everything you're doing. The NFT, I think, I know we got a lot of people who are very excited about everything mm -hmm. there. But... Um, which part should we start off with? Should we start off with the NFTs, the the, the prepaid part, or what do you want to do? You want to you want to maybe start with the, the latest thing and then we'll go sure, back. Why don't we start with the NFTs because it's, it's easy. Um, okay. So, but but let me let me frame it for everyone. So so Liquid Avatar is in the in the business of empowering users to manage, control, and benefit from their digital identity. And digital identity is the next wave of being able to prove that you are you online. I know it sounds relatively simple, but it's a very complex problem that has been tackled for the last 20 years and finally exists. And we, you know, we'll get back to it, but governments and everyone are talking about these health passports and digital credentials, and we're right at that intersection, as you say. And our market is 100% is of the online market. But, but if you look at our Liquid Avatar mobile app, which is sort of the, the intersection point of all our services, you, way we look at things is that you can represent yourself in different facets of your personality by these avatars. And again, we'll go into more detail. And when those avatars started their journey two and a half, almost three years ago as NFTs. So we've been around this market for three years. So, you know, given the toys in the background and some of the businesses we've been in, a lot of the people in the industry came to us and said, hey, you guys know about avatars, you know about NFTs can you help me? I want to do an NFT. And we said, well, there's probably a great market opportunity here, a business opportunity. So with our partners, we created Oasis Digital Studios. And Oasis Digital Studios is all about storytelling experiences and collectability in the NFT market. We work with major brands to help them tell their stories, create experiences, and create collectability. Now, we don't talk about value. Because if you're a collector, you know that you're you're looking at the opportunities of collectability and what that will mean. So we're not talking about NFTs as as a as a value proposition. We're talking about them as a collectible. So we're doing unique programs with you know the John Lennon Lost Weekend with Jeezy with 
the outer space man now with jim stranko with tom defalco who again was the editor-in-chief at marvel we're doing some really cool projects all those projects have different touch points for us they're not only nfts but a lot of those will come back to our system as avatars that people can use to represent different facets of the personality but but in this cycle where avatars are amazingly popular and gaining traction and a way for people to get their toes into sort of the crypto market we're there we're there this could be, bigger, this could be bigger than the crypto market because i think i think you know when it comes to the nft it's really at least you get something and it actually is exactly. it is kind of a store i mean well it is a store value because we've seen some of these things so oh, just loony yeah they, they've gone crazy i mean some are people are buying avatars for four hundred thousand dollars i mean it's 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 and you know things are going off for 60 million millions of dollars and you know eminem did eminem you know it's really amazing when you look at a and we understand this because i've done work in entertainment and music and film and all that type of stuff and uh so you've got to understand rights management and when you think about you know eminem eminem did a great super great nft drop last week or the week before but didn't do any of his music because he doesn't actually own the rights to his music. So he had to do something else that he doesn't. Artists don't always own the rights to their music. The publishers might own it. The um, the label might own it. The Most musicians don't own their music. And, and so you've got to know where the landmines are um, and you've got to work with your partners to know where the landmines are. So we've got estates coming to us. And, um, you know, one of our programs involves, uh, you know, some pictures that uh, have been approved and we're not ready to release them yet of people, you know, like Jimi Hendrix. Like, so we've got some really flipping cool things on the go. Uh, we've got great animation with our partners, different things that should appeal to the collectible market. Okay. And how do you, so how will you monetize this? How will you make, what's going to be the business model? Like with, with the, when you do these NFTs, like what's going to be the, simple. And this is why before, let's just, you know, recap. It's, it's simple. And Jack, this is why it's working because everything we do in our whole business is transparent. So our model is very simple. We work with our partners who are the talent, the artists and the talent. Um, when we sell an NFT, the production costs come off the top and then we split the balance 70, 30 in favor of the artist. So Oasis Digital Studios gets 30%. So if something sells for a dollar, we get 30 cents on the dollar. So it's a pretty lucrative market and all our costs, our major costs have been covered prior to that. So, so, you know, at the end of the day, it's a really good opportunity for us to generate um, revenue at this early stage of our company without putting pressure on what we would call our core business, right? It's another part of our business that's gonna help us gain revenue, traction, value with, uh, with, and still allow us to build our core elements without that immediate pressure that to, to perform at a revenue stage. Because if you look at major companies like Google and Facebook and even Apple, or you look at Amazon, all of them took time for them to gain hockey stick revenue growth. And, and we're, we've entered a brand new market of digital identity, which, you know, I was on a call with one of our broker friends and he said, you know, I finally get this after 16 months of explaining it to me. I see all these news reports, see everything going on. And now I understand digital identity and why we'll have a health passport and why my driver's license and the government of Ontario put out this big white paper last week. I understand it all. And I said, you know, that is amazing. And I'm so proud of you but we're already 16 months ahead of that, which you're understanding now. So our job is to be 16 months ahead. And we, we see digital identity as one of the largest growth opportunities that the world has ever seen. And I, and I'm, and that's a personal opinion because I was there when e-commerce started and I, you know, I said, look, yeah, we're going to talk about that. You know, I think that's one of the, the things that I find interesting about this, this story is that, Essentially, you know, you you've been very, you know, really a pioneer in a lot of you know mega, mega, mega trends, uh, very early on before people like really understood like what it was like. Yeah, you know, people take e-commerce, e-commerce for granted now, but out of the thin air, e-commerce showed up. Yeah, yeah, but but, but it was but like you know when when it started like in the you know the nineties when you actually were, were one of the pioneers and with with the you know actual transactions online. It was like people didn't believe anybody would ever use a credit card to buy something online. I did not. I, I'll admit, I was one of those people who did not believe that people 
would, would really do transactions online. I, I didn't believe it. And then I saw it happen. Okay, it makes sense. But, you know, no, I, I think nobody believed it. 99% of people. And, then, you know, so I think the same thing is happening with me. Listen, I'm, maybe I'm a late adopter to crypto, <laughs> the crypto thing. I've been, you know, I've been like, I don't know if it works. But, you know, it apparently works, right? I mean, you see the, the valuations. The NFT thing. Uh, so it, it's um, so you you've really been very very early in these trends, and you were talking about this stuff. The NFT thing. I mean, God. I mean, we were talking about this like in November. You were talking about this stuff right before you joined our platform, and nobody knew what. And nobody was talking about NFT. The market and no. NFTs. Or nobody was talking about NFTs. No. The market no. up until like a month ago, uh, two months ago. Our right? job is to look forward, right? Um, you know, it's sort of like uh, we've got to keep our eyes facing forward, but our feet planted firmly on the ground. Right. That's that's sort of the mantra of what we're doing. A uh, part of, of what we do at, at our firm is is we've got to focus on today, but have a vision for tomorrow. And and we're working with great partners that have that vision. And, you know, while while and, and, and again, there's some amazing um, um, people in this industry. But while others are talking and trying to figure it out, we're actually doing we, you know, as, as our, our chief business development officer says, we need to lead from the front. So um, I, I'll comment on something that happened yesterday. Uh, one of our partners, and we've mentioned, and it's been in a press release, so all the people online can look this up, a company called Indicio out of the US, um, Indicio.tech, and Heather Dahl, the CEO, along with CETA and SITA, announced yesterday that they're, they've created a health pass for the island of, uh, of Aruba. And, uh, but so why is that impactful? Well, CETA, if anybody looks up CETA and it's S I T A dot arrow, CETA is the organization that handles all the airlines, 90% of destinations, most of the airports around the world. They're the people who, who are the association that, that their customers are the airlines. So all the people who move, you know, millions and billions of people a year. And, and so this healthcare pass in Aruba is supported by CETA and the government of Aruba and, and Indicio. And that is the same construct of our wallet and our credentials. So it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that our platform will be compatible with these up and coming credentials. So we're way ahead of the curve. We're, we're in market where others are talking about it. I mean, the province of Ontario, um, Digital Ontario white paper, phenomenal white paper, hats off and, and applause to the government of Ontario. You know, in the midst of a pandemic, launching a digital first strategy, unbelievable, you know, for infrastructure and business and healthcare, but they don't have a credential yet. We already have the ability to do credentials. Last week, we announced a partnership with Vector Labs to create healthcare credentials. We're talking to major partners about verification systems. We are at the forefront of this industry. And while people may, as you say, you know, Jack, may not believe today, I will tell you today, and, and you can put this in your book, that two to three years from now, no one will be using a username and password. It's got to be the most archaic technology out there that can be easily hacked. So why not use your face? I mean, and, and why not use a fingerprint, right? Why not use a biometric to control that and then allow you to control the data in behind it. What I will comment about the Ontario document as well is it was eerily familiar because they they used this, our, our trademark statement is, share what you want, when you want, and with whom you want. And if anybody reads that document, they're gonna see something very similar in there. So we, we were part of the consultation process and we've been very excited to work with Ontario and other governments to help hopefully shape some of what's coming down the pike. Okay, oh, so we got, let's, let's get to some audience questions. Uh, sure. In terms of getting an update on the app. So what's, how is the adoption? Because you launched this, uh, was it about a month ago, roughly? February 18th, we launched it. So again, let me, let me set the stage. So February 18th was the first stage of our app. We said there's gonna, it's gonna come out in four stages. And during that four stages, we were going to basically test the waters with the app get feedback, change things. And if anybody's followed our app in the Google, um, uh, on Google Play or in the Apple App Store, they have gonna, they're gonna see some major changes to the app along the way. Some amazing marketing, and we've just started ramping up our marketing. But I, I, I'll tell you, I mean, you know, uh, there are, you know, there's well over 10,000 people who've already downloaded the app. Now that doesn't seem like a big number, and I know that, but we haven't really focused on the marketing. We focused on the experience, and we're continuing to improve that experience because Again, we're building a utility that we want people to use every day. So we need that feedback. We need that early stage. And you can't test it in the App Store without being live. 
So our ramp up period, we're already out in universities and colleges in the US piloting the program. So our ramp up period really starts in at near the end of Q2 and, and beyond the rest of the year. And our goal, and again, this is not any guidance or, and again, as we would always say, everyone has to do their due diligence, but our goal is to have over 2 million people on this app by the end of 2022. Now saying that, that's our goal, our internal goal, again, not guidance. But if we start working with governments, those numbers will pale in comparison. I mean, we're setting this up to be a big deal, not a small deal. Okay, and I think, okay, so here's the thing that, that, that I find interesting is, okay, so when you, and we talk about the, we haven't talked about this, that, that you know, we've been talking about NFTs the last couple of times, but so the, the, the model for the, for the app, essentially, uh, can you explain again the revenue model and, and essentially, sure. because the valuation of the, com of, uh, you know, the, the, of the company of the stock essentially is going to be driven by the number of users you get. I sure. mean, generally, that's, that's the way it's going to translate. So, you know, two mil so in a nutshell, how much is 2 million users worth if you get okay, so I'm gonna, so I'm gonna explain the revenue model. I'm gonna come right back to the enterprise question, enterprise value question. So, so like many companies, and, and we have the we have the benefit of starting in this digital identity age, others have to adopt it. So companies like Google have stopped third party co uh, cookies. Facebook has changed their privacy policies. They've all had to adapt for this. We're adapting, not adapting, we're building it for this today. Um, but all the companies, that major companies that we talk about, give their services away for free and get revenue from advertising and other services. What's different about us is we do give our services away for free. We are positioning ourselves as a utility, but all our users are verified. So one user, one account, real users in our system, no fakes, no bots, no hacks. So we've got over 400 major firms that are already on our system that want us to connect passively. We never sell or rent data, our users with their offers. So there's a huge opportunity there. And we're talking major, major brands at Cabin Cash. So that's, that's number one. When we connect those people or they connect voluntarily and make a transaction, we get a piece of the action. Number two, we talked about this. We said we'd do it. There's our Visa card. That is the cabin. That is a real Visa card with a cabin brand on it. So this, so we're proud to have announced last week that we've launched our card. I mean, real card, Magstripe, CCV, everything's on there. It's a real card. So our, we make money off the Visa card for our users because again, they're verified they can qualify for a user for a car. Now, a verified user has a value somewhere around 125 to 200, maybe $300, you know, in industry comparables. A card holding customer has a value of up to $1,000 because it's, it's, a, it's a pure FinTech banking app or mobile card program. So Jack, we think, again, no guidance, we think an average user can be worth somewhere between $300 and $500 US on a lifetime value. Take the number I said earlier, multiply by this number, the number becomes quite large. And yeah, so it's basically, it's basically, so that, that's kind of the path to, to this mm -hmm. being a billion dollar valuation. If you get those yeah. 2 million people, the company will be worth, you know, realistically, you know, a billion dollars based Potentially. on based on based on the comps and and right now what's the, the market cap oh my god the market cap today is what is it 20 million i don't even know it's like yeah it's 20 25 million yeah you, fully so you got potential potentially there's potentially a 50x uh yeah. from here potentially. uh you know you got as long as you execute and and everything falls in the place two million people it'll listen if any sure. two million people even if you execute in, in, in a, a half-assed way if you get two million users <laughs> It's worth the same amount of money. I mean, it doesn't matter. But, but again, remember, Jack, that our business is applicable to 100% of the online market. Everyone who has a digital identity is going to have to hold that digital identity in a wallet, not necessarily our wallet. Okay. So it's not, not necessarily our wallet, but, but we're working on a utility that will allow other wallets to be found inside our application. So we'll be able to work with everyone and hopefully every wallet. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. So we got people asking, when are they going to get their cabin card? Cabin. We got people, but people applying for the cabin card here. They're, well, they're on their waiting list. You know, we're, we're, you know, we've got our cards internally. We're waiting for the final visa test to be approved. Visa does a lot of testing. They, we get, we got our cards first. So we're expecting, you know, within the next 30, 45 days that we'll be rolling out the cards. 
Okay. Uh, do you want you you have any revenue projections you look at? You you kind of stayed away from making. No, we, we're yeah. I, we don't want to give God. I apologize, but yeah, yeah. you know, it, because this is a new business, and, and we have internally, you know, we need to see that. But again, if everyone wants to focus on the revenues, I think you're looking in the wrong location initially. And if you look at Google or Facebook or Amazon or any of those, they built their customer base first. Our revenues will come from our NFT programs, our card programs and everything else. But we have to be laser focused on building an amazing product and onboarding large groups of users. What happens tomorrow, Jack, if all of a sudden government says you've got to have a wallet and a credential? We have to have the ability to ramp up. And we do have it because we're, we've moved from the AWS cloud, which was a phenomenal product. We're now partnered with IBM on the IBM cloud. So we have the, the resources and capability to, to move up and the support from IBM. But imagine that all of a sudden, you know, a government opens up something and says, hey, can you help us? We're not talking about 1 million or 2 million people anymore. We're talking 20 million, 30 million, 40 million, 100 million people. If an airline comes on board, like, I mean, we're prepping for that, that catalyst. As you said, you know, you're looking for catalyst, you're looking for inflection points, and you're looking for market. We think we have all three of those key indicators. No, no. I think what makes uh, what makes the liquid story, um, you know, unique is that you know these are, are, are I mean, the numbers. I mean, that that you know, you, you know, your catalyst. You know, you. I mean, the huge, the huge, all of them are huge numbers. If you're talking about you know numbers of users to get on, on you know, onto this uh, onto the digital identity platform between the stuff with the governments, the health, you know, these digital health passes. So I mean, you know, these are things which have you know that huge scale. Yeah, which makes uh, you know. So, so in other words, all you need to do essentially is, I, I think, from from the investor's perspective, and I, <clears throat> and I talked about this before, is you, you know, for the stock to really move, and I'm only looking at the stock. I'm sorry, David. Right. I, I, I'm, That's I'm okay. Only the stock. I'm not really that interested in the business. <laughs> Just look at the stock. Well, I think one, I think one goes hand in hand, but <laughs> it does. I'll, you need, you need, I'll, I'll leave it to you. You need the business to move the stock. But exactly. basically, I think what's going to happen is. If you can show some traction that you're starting to get user signups, even, look, by the way, the 10,000 is actually a pretty decent number in the first few months. Because, I mean, uh, yeah, because listen, because these things they don't go 10,000, 11,000. I mean, they go 10,000, 50,000. You know, it, it, they, they, they can grow, you know, exponentially. It's well, not, Jared, a, it's, I, I just want to tell you here that once you show that, then the market, the, the valuation will be like completely different. Well, and the reason I, I please don't take that as that we're disappointed that there's ten thousand people we we you know that have downloaded the app and and it's no I don't I'm not disappointed I think I think, you know, I think it's no no don't people. look at look at that we think it's a low number but yeah we've built in the past um, a, a, a social media platform um, that had two hundred million people on it so we're used to that um, you know exactly. in my in one of my previous companies I was invited in to be one of the bidders on MySpace when it was being sold because we had such a large profile. So we understand how to get to the law of large numbers. We've seen it, we've done it, but with this digital identity is a new ball of wax because it involves blockchain technology. It involves, you know, regulation and support. And we're at the forefront with the associations we belong to, with the partners we're involved with. We've done this right. So we've set the stage for that catalyst that exponential growth yeah no okay so so what was what was the social the, the social media thing, thing that you had with 2 million users what, well it was what? a language translation platform so we'll so we'll just uh you know it was it was good that's why we worked with marvel and disney and all those types of uh, programs well, you were able to get you were able to get 200 million users yeah how yeah. long did it take to do that two years two years okay so we, grew, we actually grew faster than Facebook because we, we actually connected to all the social media platforms in Asia. I mean, it was, so we've done this before we've um, our team, you know, we look at three things. We look at reach. So the reach for a company is, is, is a hundred percent of the market. That's a potential reach. The um, you know, our, we've got a very unique business model. We're building utility that is digital identity at its core with bells and whistles and peanut butter and all that kind of stuff around it to help, you know, gamify and, ca and create catalysts. And then, and it's free to consumers and powered by advertisers. And then the last piece, which certainly is not the least, is that we've got a phenomenal team. If everyone looks at our team, we've got a core team and, and we're growing around the world, but we've got a core team of, of exceptional people that know what they're doing. 
and that are in the right places. I mean, every time we come back to see you, we've got a new development because the market is driving this. We're, we're putting our stake in the ground, locking and loading it in that location and then moving from there. Yeah, like okay, so we got, yeah. let's wrap up. We're, we're running, we're, we got time for, we're, I'm gonna do three questions real quick. Actually, three very good questions. No, but not the Master Yoda question. There we go, I like your Master uh, Yoda. There you go. Any consideration to implement the messenger service? Oh boy. Would Avatar yeah. would automatically spread virally like a bushfire, like a wild, okay. I guess it means a wildfire, but it's a journey. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But okay, so so let me, let me try and give, the, this is why I said we're 16 months ahead. Um, once you have your, your agent or your wallet for lack of anything better, you have what's called a digital identifier. You have a unique digital identifier that belongs to you. That digital identifier over time can be used to send messages. So you can send peer to peer messaging over time. We're not ready for it yet, but that's sort of one of our roadmap uh, items that once you have a digital identifier, you can, you can communicate with anyone else that has a digital identifier encrypted peer to peer. So for, I, I want to say this with great respect, forget about WhatsApp, forget about Signal, forget about Messenger. You will be able to crypt, uh, encrypted high-end encryption, peer-to-peer -peer communication, but that's a roadmap item, not an item for today. Okay, I mean, that would be a game changer. That's that, like It's already, it's already in, in theory, it's built into the system. There's still a lot of work to be done, but yeah, we know. That's why I said we're 60 months ahead. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So we've got two questions. One of the, okay. So we're, we're going we're to put together two questions in one. Sure. Uh, how many shares outstanding? How many shares are owned by sure. insiders? So in, so a number of shares currently outstanding on a basic non-diluted is, is about 103 million fully diluted with all our warrants and everything. And, and broker warrants is somewhere around, um, 135 to 145 million. Pardon me, I don't have exact that number. But it's around. It's let's say it's at outside 145 ish. Um, and um, uh, insiders today have 103 million insiders own in excess of 30 million shares, and um, the primary shares are escrowed. So I will say this with great respect. I had warrants coming due, that came due. I bought my warrants, and they went right back into the escrow. 75% uh, went into the escrow provision. So we're not we're buying our warrants and putting them into escrow. So we're paying cash and tucking it away. Okay, so I'm going to wrap two more questions into one sure. again. So this uh, Samuel's asking: is growth plan for next two years, uh, three years, excuse me, mm -hmm. growth plan for next three years, and also what's the projected impact of NFTs uh, in, the, in terms of revenues? So our NFTs, as everyone knows, um, we, we we start to launch our NFT program in the up in the, in the next week so there's no if ands or buts we 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 put a line in the sand as we always do and we're going to do everything we can to meet that expectation um our programs have a, a huge upside potential a revenue value for the company um you know the available product um over time uh in the first two months will be several million dollars so that's that's an opportunity i can't say that we'd sell out completely but there's millions of dollars of nfts that will be available and our growth plan for the next three years is is laser focused on working with our partners and again we're seeing new opportunities every day because our partners are opening up new places new opportunities and the governments are opening up new opportunities but it's all about user growth getting users on boarded creating utility that someone uses every day um uh, so th it is a functional utility with a lot of great services around it so we've already said that look at our internal goal again no guidance is a couple million people but we could be below that or way beyond that we don't know yet but we believe we have we have the product that can do that uh okay we'll do one last question that's it that's it last question last cash question. on hand how much cash on hand burn rate um well again you have to look at our financial statements where we can't really give guidance on that i apologize but we um you know we i will tell you that we have had a lot of people come and offer us dollars um uh, research capital has been very good to us and um you know we spoke at the hc wainwright conference a week ago there's been a lot of uh engagement a lot of opportunities but right now we're we're standing pat with the cash we have on hand okay so you're not you're not you're not raising any capital right now not not today not at all okay not today maybe <laughs> <laughs> well, not today. I mean, we're you know we we have, we have you know we there there are lots. Everybody, of everybody's around. always every every company is always you know. If, if you you have to be receptive to to those. Otherwise, yeah. people don't necessarily offer a second or third time. But we're working diligently. I, I'm not really yeah. interested at this level in in raising capital. We have. 
we have strategic partners that are looking to come on board and and strategic usually means that there's a uh, some kind of investment but but again we're we're really focused on getting our product to market building value because we're primary shareholders like we we want to see this grow we'd like a as you say a 10 5 10 20 50 50 bagger yeah, that's, that's I, I think uh, i mean realistically i mean i, don't, I mean i'm assuming if, if the stock i mean in terms of, I don't, I don't think you're going to be doing any raise until the stock gets, let's say, back above, let's call it uh, forty cents or so. I don't think that's, uh, you know. Well, we got, got to remember too that 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 we have, um, we we have a lot of warrants. That that non dilutive portion is a lot of warrants. I mean, you know, those are investors that already exist. So there's, you know, if you take the number that it gave you from diluted from basic to to fully diluted, there's a lot of warrants and options out there. There's a lot of capital on hand there. Okay, so we got a suggestion. Wait for the price to get back to fifty cents to a dollar. So at a dollar, I agree. At a dollar, is a I, you know, I, I look at it. You know, there's an old saying from you know your mouth to God's ear. <laughs> like at the end of the day, right? You know, exactly. we we we'd love for the stock to be there. You know, and and you know we you know we count on support from our stakeholders to help us get there. Fantastic. Okay, David, thank you. Uh, we look forward to getting the next exciting update on NFTs, digital identity, fintech, all the good stuff uh, next time you're on, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Can I just give a plug? Uh, everyone yes. go to oasisdigitalstudios.com. Watch what we're doing because that's our NFT site. And please visit liquidavatar.com or liquidavatartechnologies.com and you'll get updates. Sign up for our list. Oh, and by the way, on May 18th, we have our uh, digital credentials and wallets uh, event, um, sign up for that as well. It, I think it'll be very informative. We've got some great speakers. Okay, Dave, if I knew you were gonna give a plug, I would have run it on the banner next time. We, you you know, no problem. Put the, Come, you know, this is digitalstudios.com, all right. Super. David, thank you very much. Thanks, Jack. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, let's get ready for fans. Okay, let me just set this up here. Okay, stand by. Okay, and um, Darius. Hey, hey, Jack. Yeah. Okay, all right. Uh, we get a little little cartoon. What is it? What do you get? The little prize? <laughs> every every holiday, uh, my daughter makes me a little bit of a uh, artwork. So that's from Easter still. So that's been up there for for about a month. All right. No, it's a very, it's well done. How old is your daughter? I didn't know you had a daughter. <laughs> uh, my daughter's two and a half, and I actually oh, wow. just had a, a son um, three days ago. Wow! Well, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Wait. So you tell me, a two and a half year old did that uh, thing? She gets help from, from daycare. Okay. Because, I mean, it's very cool. I mean, it's like, you know, I mean, it's like, that's pretty well put together. It's like, yeah. it's, okay, let's, uh, okay, so let me just get things set up here. Uh, okay. So if you're ready, I'm going to just put, quick put, we'll do, do a little thing with a little countdown and, and I will get in here in just a second. Okay, here we go. Hey, welcome everybody to Wall Street Reporter's next Super Stock live stream, where we bring you stocks which have that 10x to 100x upside potential. Uh, fans, fans is actually one of those. Uh, Darius, welcome back. Hey, Jack, you know I me? Mean? Darius, you're actually you're one of our 10 bagger success stories. Of course, the stock has pulled back a little bit, so there's an opportunity here for people to get a bite apple so to speak or first bite you're cutting out a little bit jack but i think i think i can, can hear you hang on a second let me see how is the let me try this connection here okay now you're frozen 
Darius? I can hear you, but uh, your video is frozen. Is my video is frozen? Okay, that's better. Okay, okay. All right, this is, okay, so always, always fun for the internet. Okay, so Darius, we're just saying that, you know, again, you know, we bring people these 10X to 100X stocks. Fans is 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 actually one of our 10 baggers of, uh, you know, 2020, early 21. And, you know, there's been a, you know, pullback with the market right now. So I think there's an opportunity for people to kind of, either either for new people to come in at these levels, which are, I think, pretty compelling, or, you know, I don't want to say double down, but this is, it's an opportunity for people to take kind of that 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 second bite of the apple, so to speak. Um, and uh, you have what's interesting is the stock, right? I mean, where you are right now, your developments right now, you're much further along than where you were when the stock was double the price at a dollar fifty or a dollar twenty or two dollars, whatever it is, which is ironic, no? Yeah, we keep we keep hitting milestones and executing, but. You know, of course, there's been a bit of a market pullback, right? But I think we're, like you said, in a much better position than we were just even just a few months ago. So we're still very, very excited about the future. So I kind of want to, I want to, I think it would be a good time to really get investors up to speed, bring, you know, get them updated on exactly what you've been doing, like what in the story. Because, I mean, you know, a lot of people are, they're seeing the stock. Oh my God, the stock is going down. But, you know, it, a lot of stocks are, are especially in, in the growth space, are going down. But the irony is everything is, you know, is really progressing much, much further ahead. And um, I want to kind of go through a couple things. One is uh, I want to talk about you know, what's happening with the UK, McBookie, all that stuff. Um, and, but actually, I wanted to start off with something which there was a piece of news came out. And I saw it. And I didn't really. I apologize. I didn't really pay too much attention to it because it was like kind of like awards. I was like, eh, you know, awards. I, I, I didn't understand it. Then I look at it. Oh my God. Like before it was, this is like, this is like a big deal. This, this was it, EGR and you're not. So I want you to explain the award you're not about what the organization is. Because I looked at, because I went before the internet, I figured, let me, let me check this out. I go to the website and my God, like you're right there. You're like right there featured, you know, it says fans unite right next to, you know, uh, uh, GAN, IGTs, it can be. These are like, I mean, so essentially you're being positioned or, or you are you could win this award and beat out these essentially multi-billion dollar companies. Yeah, it was, that was huge for us. Um, it was the EGR North American Awards and we actually got nominated for, for two awards and we got the notification that we were nominated. And then, like you said, we went to see who, who else was shortlisted and seeing our name against these, you know, multi-billion dollar gaming giants, right? It's pretty cool. Um, gives a lot of confidence, like on this on the Sportlook Platform Provider of the Year Award, the other nominees were, like you said, IGT, it's a $3.6 billion company. Uh, Canby, $13.2 billion company. Scientific Games, $5.3 billion company. And Fans United, right? So for us, for our platform to be up there with, with these companies, when our team is so much smaller, with less resources, uh, I think it's just a testament, you know, not only to our team, but our tech um, and where we can go from here. Yeah, no, I mean it's it's really incredible. Hang on, a second. maybe you know what I should do? Maybe I should actually let me see if I can pull it up on. I'm gonna I'm gonna do a screen share because I was like, this is this is actually pretty cool. Hang on a second, Darius. Hang on a second. Let me just do. A, let me let me set this up. I wasn't planning to do this before, but let me do this this screen share because I think it's important for people to see this. It's it's a mate. It's a I think it's a big deal uh, because again, there there's how many companies? There's there's so many companies in the space, and the fact that your um, you know fans unite is nominated is is. I think it is a major validation. Let me let me see if I can pull this up. Okay, here we go. Short list. Uh, okay. There we go. So we got the short list, right? So we got so sports book platform provider right there is is Fans Unite is is in the top position. We got IGT can be scientific, and they, so why is Fans on top? Is 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 that because you're most likely to win, or what, what's what's the reason for the order? I think it's I think it's a random order, um, but it's it's still it's impressive. It's like they have just, yeah, just being on that list with those. I think the smallest company you know on that list I think is three point six billion, right? So um, outside of us, of course. Um, so it's, it's, and that means sports book platform provider. So in other words, anybody that wants to have a sports book, any any so any casino, anybody who's in the business who's thinking of doing one, they they follow this EGR as like a major industry, you know, it's like a major thing in the in the, tr in the trade. So they're gonna, you're gonna get massive, massive attention. I mean, and if you win this award, it's gonna be huge. 
Yeah, I mean, this is a validation of platform. Like you said, for other, other companies looking to get a sports book or, or even a full service platform, like on the other award, uh, this EGR North America award should, should validate you know, what we're building and the technology we have. Uh, I think it's incredible. I, mean, I can't believe you make a bigger deal. I, you know, you guys are very, very modest. I mean, you're not talking about all the great things you're doing. You know, it was, it was, we got to get you more, more promotional. We need more because <laughs> this is. You know, if it was another, if it was some other companies, I mean, there would be, there would be like, I'd be hearing about this like every day for you know a month. This yeah, thing. we 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 try to update our shareholders on all these achievements and milestones, right? But then for us, it's quickly about putting our heads back down and, and focusing on on executing. Yeah, I mean, this is really a huge deal. Okay, so so basically, so this company, this EG, this EGR, essentially, they're uh, who, who who are they reaching? Who's their who's their audience? Is it pretty much everybody in the gaming space worldwide? Yeah, it is global. This this particular one is EGR North America, um, but they do global awards as well. So yeah, they have the the attention and viewership of a huge huge global audience in the gaming space. Okay, so and, and so the awards, the awards, uh, I guess the award, I was gonna say awards. So the award thing is at the end of the month, uh, but the fact that you're even nominated, you're shortlisted. I think it is again alongside, you know, huge company because I don't see any other small companies in there. This is just you and these giants. There's no <laughs> other. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I mean, so that's a big deal. Uh, okay, so now. Um, you got another piece of news that just came out, which is I think is pretty interesting uh, in, in terms of again, and it ties into this theme of that you're really, you know, you're, you know, it, it's like the company is expanding its footprint, especially in the U.S. Uh, so you you engage what is a, a group seventy six capital sports, they have this very long name, seventy six sports capital device or whatever it is to get, uh, you know, to, to ex essentially to expand your footprint in the U.S. with sports books, all that goods, uh, e-sport. Explain exactly what the deal is about, what they're going to do for you, what your expectations are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we keep talking about how we, we want to expand our footprint in the U.S., and I think we can do that ourselves, but if there's any opportunities for us to be able to accelerate that growth, um, we like to do it. And, and 76 uh, has a great network of sports and entertainment companies. Even they have an athlete. Um, arm, which is really cool. And so they have a great network in the US market and work with some of the top gaming companies. I think they've worked with and, and or invested in um, various companies like, like Big Big Tree um, that got acquired by Fubo. Um, they've worked with you know, with BSIN that got acquired by DraftKings. So they have that network, which is awesome. And for us, the partnership's about you know going out there with them, um, with our technology and our brand and going to find other brand partners I want to get in the gaming space. We can launch activations together in the U.S. market. So uh, we think they can help accelerate our growth in the U.S. market, and and that's a big focus for us in, in the next 12, 24 months. Okay, and you know, so, so speaking of the, of the U.S., like, what is the plan for the U.S.? Because I think like this is something you really just started talking about, or, or you know, I mean, you've probably been working on, it, but you really only started talking about just in the last couple of months. Like, what? What do we? What should we? Exp I mean, you're doing the the esports book in in Colorado, right? You got the esports thing happening. When is that going to kick in? By the way, the the sport esports e betting. Yeah, we gave an update on that a couple of weeks ago. Um, we've done our part. We have kind of built the platform. It's ready to go. Um, our partners are just waiting on the regulators to give them the go ahead. So, fortunately, when it gets with the regulators, we can't really pinpoint you know time. Uh, it's just on them right now. So we're just waiting. We're on standby. Ready to turn, turn that on uh, whenever whenever they give us the go ahead. But like you said, that's the first activation. That's within, that's in Colorado. Um, other news that we we put out there, we we signed with um, Jeff Ifra Ifra Law, who's one of the preeminent gaming lawyers in, in North America, uh, to help us navigate the U.S. market. We're going after software supplier licenses, New Jersey being the first, and then other states will be dictated by conversations we're having um, uh, or or other business development opportunities in the U.S. market. Okay, so yeah, so actually David was okay. So David's asking about license. Okay, so uh, any update on the new? Oh, so this is you're saying New Jersey? Yeah, New Jersey, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. We're working on that. It's um, it's a pretty hefty application, um, but we of course you know welcome regulations. So Scott and I are going through our application right now, working with Jeff Ifra to put forth the best application. Um, I would still think it's a few months away. Okay, and what about the UK gaming license? Yeah, another good question. Uh, we. Again, whenever you deal with regulators, it's it's very difficult um, to to put that uh, 
to put a date on it, but we keep thinking end of May is kind of our target date. We are in constant communication with the UK regulators. They said we've put forth a really strong application. We were pretty thorough on our application. So um, so I think hopefully by, by end of May, early June, we'll get both both our UK licenses. Okay. I didn't, sure. realize, I was, I didn't realize I was live on air when I, when I said I had the newborn. Oh. <laughs> I think it was before, I don't know, yeah, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so the um, so the basically this month is uh, you know we're, we should expect in theory the next uh, we're already in the first so roughly in the next four weeks so we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get the UK license. You know, knock on we board. hope we hope so, and that'll probably be our so far our biggest milestone to date um, this year. So we're on standby for that. We get them the information they require as soon as they send it over. So we're pretty diligent there. We're looking forward to get, getting those too. Okay, so those, so this, yeah, it's it's amazing. It, it's sort of like, um, you know, it's it's almost like it, w w a lot of times investors that when they look at a, you know, they look at the stock, they see the things that you know, it's like a roller coaster. I mean, this is a stock that went from what twenty cents to two and change back to sixty cents. And they think, oh my god, this is it. It's it's all. And the reality is, the growth of a company it's sort of like an acorn underground. Just because you don't see anything doesn't mean that the acorn and the thing is, is growing and then it's going to pop out and then you're going to have a, a massive oak tree. Uh, yeah. Of course, these things happen faster than, you know, companies you know, grow faster. <laughs> so, so just because you don't see anything doesn't mean something is not happening. It's like, you know, it's like the baby, right? You, just because you don't see it doesn't mean it's not, you know, <laughs> being developed, you know, for nine yeah. months. Yeah. So, and we, we, we do our best to try to communicate with our shareholders with, with what we're doing, but yeah, there's a lot going on behind the scenes and we think we're fi firing on all cylinders right now um, with our company. Obviously, like you said, there's been a full kind of this, market. This, uh, let's, let's go back to the, let's go back to the, 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 the newborn thing. Yeah. Just because you don't see the kid doesn't mean uh, is, is, is developing for it. it takes them nine months and then all of a sudden they pop out and then there it is, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. So this is, I think right now you got, you're working on some things, which all of a sudden we're going to see probably, it may not be for a couple of months, realistically. I mean, by the time by the time you get the benefits of it, like the UK gaming license, the New Jersey license, the esports, all of a sudden somebody could wake up in you know at the end of let's call it, I'll be conservative September first, like almost a year our one year anniversary, <laughs> they're gonna wake up September first and they'll say, oh my god, this is like these guys have uh, you know all these great things and you know you, and then let's say you win this award even even the fact that you're nominated, I mean I think this is gonna give you massive attention in the US space. Yeah, just putting us putting us in the same name as those groups yeah. is, is huge for us. And, and we've been public, like you said, we've been public now for 12 months and we've done a lot in the last 12 months. And I think we're in a really strong position now with our tech, with our team, the acquisitions we've made, the revenue growth we're having, we're cashed up, we have no debt. Um, uh, yeah, what's the cash position? I mean, what's, I mean, like, you know, what was it? I think, how much do you have? A ballpark? I think, I think we have about 15 million, one five million cash. We have zero debt. Um, that gives us years of runway. Uh, we don't have a, a huge burn. We're revenue generating, which is great. So allows us to then, you know, not have to think about you know cash and just keep focusing on on the business and growing. Yeah, no, it's interesting because uh, you know, you, yeah, the reality is you've only been public really a year, roughly less less than a year, I think. Twelve months. We went we went public May fifth, so just over yeah. Oh wow! That's so good. So again, congratulations. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so so one year, which is amazing, because a lot of companies, you know, they they're public for you know, you, you hear stories all the time. You actually, there's been a lot of a lot of progress. Uh, let's talk about McBookie, and then we'll go back to this. But, but I think McBookie is actually a good example of of something which has been really uh, we've seen some pretty strong development. What's give us an update? What's going on there in terms of uh, gaming revenues? Yeah, we. We love our, our McBookie platform, our acquisition. The team that out there is, is so strong. Uh, when we acquired them, um, you know, we had a mandate to, to double their revenue in the first year, and we did that, um, which was awesome. We had a mandate again to double our revenue here in 2021, and you know, we're on pace to do that. We put a, a, a press release out giving some updates on their Q1 numbers, which are really strong. Um, so we're, we're excited about that platform. I think we had just under a million in revenue um, in Q1 over, I think, 28 million of betting volume. So these are great numbers for us. We're continuing to get new players on the platform. And we're still not you know, out there spending a significant amount of marketing dollars. So still a ton of room to grow. There's big, big events this year um, with the Euro Cup. Uh, 
Scotland's in it, so big marketing opportunities for us out there. This is the Olympics again, so uh, we think we still have a lot of room to grow. There, we're still scratching the surface of what we can do with McBookie, and we're still focusing really on Scotland. But we have the opportunity to go after the entire UK market with that platform. Uh, okay, so let's let's get to a couple of questions here. Um, oh yeah, this is this is this is yeah. I really want to get into this. Um, so Mike is asking. Okay, so the games, which is I think this is a big part of the story. Uh, which is, you know, all the, the, the eye gaming, you know, the, so what you call is RNG game, you know, the, which yes. is essentially, the, I mean, that's the big cash generator for all these guys, for these casino sports books. Uh, what's uh, any update on uh, the, the aggregation that that channel? Yeah, so we, we gave all our games to the year to in integrate into the platform. We were down the queue a couple of weeks ago or a few weeks ago. They said, now it's our turn. So they've been integrating our games. They still haven't given us the go ahead that they're complete. We're hoping it's really any day now. And so we're excited about that too, because once once those get integrated, then all their casino partners can turn on our games. So that'll be that'll be good for us, you know, start being able to see which games get played, which is the casinos like, start getting revenue generating on those. And then we're continuing building more games. Our fifth game's almost complete now. So we still like to get a suite of about ten games by the end of the year and then okay. send more more aggregator partners. So basically, okay. So the, the goal is to get ten of these games end of the year, and I think let's. I think it's a very important to reiterate kind of the business model and, and the upside of that, uh, because look, just walk 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 us through, uh, you know, what, what those numbers would look like. You know, each game can generate how much per casino. Yeah, the, well, the business model is we built these games uh, like these random number generated games, and they have guaranteed what they call RTP, so return to players. So you have these built in margins that you. It's actually know you're going to be able to make over the long run, anywhere from I think two and a half percent to four percent, and then if those games are on our platforms, obviously we take those. If those games are going through aggregators, and we share that revenue with the aggregator and the casino partners, so we'll do the revenue share on those. So um, the more games, more casinos we can get into, more players are playing these games, more rev share we're taking. So um, the year has over 120 different sports books in their in their integration. But that's just one aggregator. We'd like to sign two or three more uh, later this year as well. Get our games into hopefully over a thousand different sports books uh, across the world. Okay, so uh, so a thousand different sports books, and but the numbers the, in terms of you can generate. I think last time I think uh, maybe it was Scott to mention. You know, if a game that's wor is working, you can generate you know uh, five hundred. I mean, some five hundred grand a month. To the bottom line, from the, 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 your share of that. Yeah, I think it's the really popular games. Yeah, the really popular games can generate, you know, a significant amount of revenue. So that's why we're excited to just get these games live on these casinos and see which ones are popular and see which ones get played, so that we can start projecting more of our casino uh, revenue and then keep building games and keep getting them into more casinos. Everyone, else, everyone wants to get, you know, you want to get your players into the casino, right? That's that's a big mandate for. A lot of these companies, so uh, we recognize that, and, and we think that there's an opportunity to go after a younger demographic with our casino games, the same demographic that plays, you know, esports as well. So, um, you know, we we can have sports books, sport traditional sports. We have esports, we have casino games, and being the owner of that content, I think, is key. Yeah, because I mean, in other words, like if you have, uh, if you're, I think, uh, let's say, let's say you're not even doing five. Let's say the game is generating a hundred grand per casino. You have ten of these games, potentially a million, and you multiple. You know, you you spread that over a thousand. I don't want to go through the crazy the numbers, but realistically, you could be generating you know thirty million a year. You know, in eighteen months. Yeah, we we, we still don't really. Yeah, we don't we don't project our casino revenues yet until we we get an understanding. But yeah, the popular games can generate significant you know six figures for us. Um, so we gotta get. You know, get you know what? I, I, that thirty million numbers, might, because I, I know a, there's, a, you know, I think we talked about it off off air a while, while back. There's a guy who has this like one of these like video game things, which is a betting. Uh, it's like a guy, and he's the guy's making thirty million a year in, re in revenue from it, like license. I mean, it's like there's a lot of lot of money to be made. Yeah, there's, yeah. it's going in his pocket basically. I mean, this is yeah. like it's, it's pure profit. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, Once this, the games are built. They don't they don't have a ton of. Um, I guess maintenance is just maintenance costs once the games are built, right? So once they're popular and they're going in, they're just revenue generating. Franchise because because essentially this, this is the whole thing with the, with the this is the big deal. This is the thing we'll, we'll keep hearing over and over in the esports and the uh, video game world is that essentially these become like franchises and they go on. Like okay, so we got let's jump to a few questions and then we're gonna wrap up. We got sure. a question about esports. 
Uh, speaking of franchises, okay. Uh, so with Counter Strike, are you tr are you trying to implement real time betting? Are you, you going to have real time betting on Counter Strike? Yeah, we have the real time betting. Um, what we call our stream betting. So as you're watching the event, you'll get live odds and and betting opportunities coming in on the screen every 30 seconds, which is really cool. So that's definitely one of our products. We want to keep adding more real-time betting, um, which is obviously one of the most popular kind of types of betting in real time. And we do that for not just esports, but traditional sports as well, of course. Okay. Uh, question about, uh, I think we maybe we can wrap up here. Okay. So, okay. So institutional investors, uh, any, do you have any, by the way, what's got, I think you have some analyst coverage coming in now. You have any, uh, Institutions coming into the stock, or are they waiting for the, uh, you know, the, the the UK gaming license, the Canadian? What's what's going on there? We had uh, we had some institutions coming in on our on our last financing, the one we closed in January. So that was our first first kind of getting in some real institutions. I think we're going to continue to get more. Some analysts we speak to are looking for certain things, like you know, potential UK licenses, the passing of Bill C two eighteen. So um, yeah, absolutely, we're going to hopefully keep getting more institutions and. and uh, Supplement that with our retail audience. Okay. What about what about those ETFs? I know there's a couple of uh, video game or gaming ETFs out there. Are, are any of those uh, in the stock? No, I don't think so. Um, early on, they had mandates of, of how big a company. Oh, they they were. I, think, I think now I think we 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 now are at the point where they can start looking at us with our size. So. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that could be you know that could be that could be a catalyst. Yeah. Uh, what's going on with Vamos? Memos is good. Um, we're getting registrations now, so just continue to, to build that sales funnel and making sure that sales funnel works. I'm actually starting to spend a little bit of money on marketing, um, kind of more test marketing and making sure everything works. So, there, you know, we're going to continue updating the market on Vamos. Um, there's some good opportunities this year in terms of marketing and, and stuff like that. So hopefully hopefully we'll see some news on, on Vamos and updates on that um, in the next few weeks. Okay, excellent. Um... Darius, I mean, so it's really is great to get this update. I hope you win this uh, award because I think it'll be it'll be you know great visibility for the stock. Uh, you know, obviously it'll you know translate into probably more more you know business. For the, you know. But yeah, I mean, it's 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 a big milestone to be to be in there with these huge giants. Uh, I think it's uh, yeah, it's it, it's going to be it's going to be very impressive. Okay, so okay, so Darius, thank you, and uh, you know we'll look forward to uh, hearing more from you in the coming weeks. I know I know there's there's, there's going to be some news flow. You got a big pipeline right now. Yeah, yeah, we'll just keep hitting our milestones. We'll keep executing. We'll make sure we'll keep our shareholders updated. And if you have any questions, you know, reach out. We're happy to chat to, to all our shareholders. Fantastic. Thank you again, Darius. Thank you so much. Cheers. Okay, uh, great things at Fans Unite. Uh, let's see. We're going to find out if this is going to be, the, it's going to go back to the 10X. The stock needs to get to that 3 to $5 level, our, which is our target for this year. Uh, let's get ready for our next presenter. Okay, stand by. Ah, oh, I, I forgot to add you guys. This, we got the dream, the dream team here. Okay, welcome everybody. Hey guys, hey Jack, how, how you doing? Hey, let me, oh, let me let me get this banner off here for a second. Let me so we can see the title. Oh wait, how do we see the titles? Like this. Now we see the titles. Okay, so um, okay, welcome Jeff, Troy, Michael. Can hey you guys Jack, like great to be here today. Hi. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So, 
Welcome everybody to Wall Street Reporters Investors Discovery Day live stream where we bring you these stocks which have that, that 10x to 100x upside potential and we're joined today again by Nass Valley Gateway, Michael Semler, the CEO and he's brought on the dream team for the uh, direct sales. We've got Troy Dooley, Jeff Rogers and this is very exciting because I think what we're going to be talking about is really probably what's going to be the big catalyst for this, you know, for the business to really explode and uh, which is going to translate into the stock doing well. So um, I want to start off with a question is, is so, so Michael, maybe we'll, we'll kind of preface this, but essentially you're lo you're launching the um, the direct sales channel later this month. This is going to go live, right? Correct. Later this month or, you know, first week of June is our target. And uh, we're we're on our on our time schedule right now. Uh, we have product in the warehouse. We have our software package lined up. We have training videos being finalized right now. Uh, so we're in a perfect position with a few weeks to go before our launch. And and Jeff and Troy have been instrumental in helping design the entire platform. Uh, and we're really lucky to have them both on board. Okay, so so Jeff, so Jeff, Troy, you guys are really—I uh, mean, you, you guys have a tremendous track record in both. In the, essentially, it's like a perfect marriage, right? like the, in the CBD and the direct selling space. So maybe you can explain. I don't know which, whoever wants to go first, but like explain, like you know, tell tell our audience a little bit about your track because I mean, most of you know, they're stock guys, not really you know marketing guys. But you tell them about you know what you've done. And, and you know how you got into how what what made you connect with Nass Valley and you know what uh, wh what do you see as the upside here? Well, Jeff, I, you know, Troy and I. Well, go ahead, Troy. No, no, you go, buddy. Uh, you know, Troy and I were uh, you know both you know instrumental in in starting the whole CBD industry from hemp, being hemp derived. You know, back in 2012 uh, when I was started first working with it. I mean, it really. It was so new. People said, you know, you can't derive CBD, a quality CBD from hemp. It can only come from cannabis. And we thought, you know, no, it's, you know, it's legal in the States. I mean, it's not illegal uh, any ways to do it. And so we started continuing to pursue it. And so, uh, you know, Troy and I worked on that project, which, which did very, very well. And, and now CBD is everywhere. I mean, before they, you know, I think half the people showed up to see if we we're going to go to jail and be arrested, but you know, that didn't happen. Uh, and now a complete industry has happened. And, and through that, uh, one of the board of directors had reached out to me and said, hey, look, you know, would you be willing to help us here? You know, put something together. Here's here's our vision and here's what we want to do. And I said, you know, I, you know, I think this will work because it's coming from a little bit different, you know, in the direct sell market than everybody else. And which which is always refreshing because now that's that can be a crowded space. So I said, you know, we if we're going to do this and do this right. You know, there's only one other guy that we need to really add to the team, and that's uh, that's Troy Dooley. And uh, so that's how it all started coming together. We've been working to, to put all the pieces together and, and make this something special. And I think special it has been because Nass Valley is doing something just a little bit different. Instead of just going into a crowded direct sales space, we're looking at this as the first project after the pandemic. There's not been really anything that's been cutting edge since the pandemic and we're coming into this from a hybrid type of model to where we're looking at the small businesses as well as the consumers so if we can take this model into small businesses whether that's tattoo shops whether that's little health and wellness stores and say look we can show you how not only can you sell the product in your stores but you can build your client base your customer base to where if they move out they go somewhere else they're still going to be able to generate that revenue. They don't have to just walk into the store. And I think that's one of the things that makes this unique. Uh, yeah. So it's, it's essentially, okay. So essentially you're doing something Yeah. So this, this hybrid model, which, which kind of caught my attention. So traditionally the direct sales has always been, you know, it's been, you know, consumer based, right? It's, it's, right. it's, it's consumers, but what you're doing essentially is not only going to have consumers, but you're going to go, be going after these small businesses, which is kind of a unique approach uh where i guess which i guess i'm assuming so they're selling these cbd products in places where consumers might have a need for you know i don't know whether it's uh, i don't know health and beauty you know whatever wherever it is whatever or you mentioned a tattoo shop but whatever wherever it is that somebody 
walks in and they have a need for uh, you know a gyms or whatever you know whatever is out there. You know, I can't even think of the the number of uh, and, and right now the, all these places now that they're reopening, they have you know they're really focused on they gotta have multiple sources of generating income. They can't just rely on you know the traditional you know bricks and mortars thing with just one lot. They need to have. I think people realize that, so there's going to be that that motivation on their part. I believe it will. I'm going to I'm going to speak up for the company here. When we look at the economy across the board, we see where there are certain states that will open up and spas, massages, hair care. They open, they get to go, and then they get to be shut down again. If we can help generate additional revenue, no matter what the actual small main street business is then even if people can't come to their place, they can have that product delivered directly to their home. And that's something that's unique. No one else has done what we're trying to do here. Okay. Now, what's um, a couple things. So so tell, I think what's important is, can you tell, tell, talk a little bit about your track record? Uh, I think it was with Canaway, other other things you've done in the direct sales, like what kind of things have you developed? Because you know our audience essentially, you know, they're investors, they want to hear about numbers, metrics. What did you do? You went from X to X. How many people did you have in your network? What were the sales? So so they want to know essentially the bottom line is they're they're thinking, okay, can you guys replicate what you've done in the past at NASA Valley? That's that's kind of the bottom line. Yeah, it, you know, I've been in, in the space for 33 years, my 33rd year now. Which I, Troy has uh, more experience than I do. And, you know, as when I was the founding CEO of Canaway and was there for, until 2000, late 2016, uh, when I went back in into the consulting field, it's uh, you know we they are a wholly owned subsidiary of a publicly traded company, have done very well expanding worldwide. Uh, before that, it, it for as far as my experience, I've owned three companies with over seven hundred thousand distributors without within the United States, but in, in all three companies. So it's just a matter of understanding the space, working with owners, and you know Troy's been you know, probably the lead consultant uh, in the direct sales space. And so I, I think we, we do bring a, a unique and we and he said we are doing it different. You know, I have a my motto is look what your competition is doing and do something different. You know, don't just be me, too. And for us to be, open up the opportunity, not only for the small businesses, but also for people who want to go out to those businesses. I mean, P CBD is out there. You see a sign twirler on the street now, you know, come in here to the CBD store. But a lot of store owners or maybe they're not thinking, will this fit within my store and with the Nath Valley uh, product line, the verticals, we can go to pet stores, we can go to a number of different things with our product products. And so it opens up an opportunity just for people who want to get out there and, and hustle and work and take this idea to somebody saying, look, let's put a, a little kiosk here and let's start selling this product in your store, opening up a whole new uh, uh, stream of income for you. And as Troy said, even if something happens and there's another shutdown, it's going to continue to bring in revenue for you, which is really going to help where people are right now. I mean, business owners are having to rethink what they did in the past because it, it's it's a whole new world out there. Interesting. We didn't even mention the, the pet side of the business. Now you, okay, so here's okay. So two things which are interesting. Now you have uh, maybe Michael. You can talk about this. So, so two things I want to ask. One is, uh, and whoever wants to answer, what, what differentiates Nas Valley? And then you can talk about your sixty SKUs. You have a product line. You have sixty different items covering everything from you know health and beauty to pets to everything. Uh, so, what 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 is the differentiator between uh, you know what, what makes Nass Valley different here? Well, I think just what you touched on. We have we're going to have sixty plus products uh, starting in June, um, working with different verticals that that CB companies generally have not worked with and not had a collective offering like we will have. As we touched on, it's going to be pets. It's going to be pain remediation. It's going to be sleep aids. It's going to be anti-aging. Uh, so we we touch on a lot of different uh, verticals that we can also go after in, with the Nass Valley Direct model. So we're not just looking at going, oh, let's get on a convenience store shelf and and hope it sells. We'll go right into a physical therapist and say, hey, this is a fantastic product. It's a bomb. Your patients should use this. You know, after their treatment, it will. It will. It's a. It's a therapy that may well work for that patient. Um, at the same time, you know, we have it's the Nass Valley Direct is just one vertical. We we are doing e-commerce. We're having fantastic traction in that right now with our new products. Um, we're up over three hundred percent in this last couple of weeks uh, time period. 
Um, so we're, we're, we have Nass Valley Direct is obviously the biggest differentiator because we do retail as well. We do distributorships as well. We do the e-commerce as I touched on, but we really feel that there's an enormous opportunity with Nass Valley Direct because the metrics are, are pretty simple if you break them down. You know, if we get if we get 2,500 associates nationwide selling only 25 products per month, that equates to 37 million dollars in top line revenue. That's extremely powerful and and very efficient way of us to generate of us to generate sales on a national basis. Um, and that is that is really I think the biggest groundbreaking. A moment that was the biggest groundbreaking moment for us when we realized we could get out to a national audience, create top line sales, build our brand at once, um, and really launch our our entire business model within like a twelve month period, which might take somebody else three or four years to accomplish. Yeah, you know what? I what I love what I love about the the whole you know direct sales MLM whatever you want to call it. What I, what I love about the the business model is. It's it's you know it's infinitely scalable and it and it and it, and it, grow, it can grow like wildfire. I mean, you know, before the internet, there was no other way to really like explode. You know, for business to explode its revenues, uh, you know, like like in a year, you can go from zero to you know uh, a billion. I mean, you, I think there, guys, you've been doing this. In this have there been there have been companies that have gone from zero to a billion in sales in a year? I would not say in a year. Now, accumulative, we've we've got some that have hit a billion and we do have billion dollar businesses in the direct sales space. Something that a lot of people don't realize is how many name brand companies started with a direct sales model. Sprint, MCI Worldwide, Dove Chocolates, Jockey, AOL. They all started with that model. And then once they became a household name, exploded. What we're doing here is saying, look, let's take that model, but let's make Main Street entrepreneurs, whether that's brick and mortar or whether they're working from home, and let's put the power into their hands by giving them good, solid products with science behind it. And that's something that's been missing by most of the companies in direct sales. What they've done is said, look, let's just follow the trend. And Jeff touched on this. We're not wanting to follow the trend. We're wanting to dominate by creating something different, taking that blue ocean approach, if you will, and saying, let's take the good and expand on it. Okay. And in terms of the Nass Valley products, maybe you guys can talk about it. Okay. So, so, okay. So pretend I'm one of your, like, your associates. What makes the Nass Valley uh, CBD product so special? Well, I, I, think, I think it is how they are made. No, 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 no. I, want to hear, I want to hear from Troy or Jeff. Okay, hear, go, sorry, guys. Well, go ahead. Those guys, oh, Jeff, roll with that one. I want to hear, I want to hear the, the, the story. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's you know, I think it's the the, the CBD product and the quality, make, you know, made in the, the labs and the uh, the facilities that are, that are all FDA-approved uh, facilities. So and I think that's a lot of the, I think it was the University of Pennsylvania that did a study and it was online of uh, the products, CBD products that were offered online. And it was in the 80 percentile that are mislabeled. You know, they don't even have what they say they have on the label. And that's scary for, for a plant like this that is made to extract things, you know, out of the soil. And so, you know, as a, as a parent, if you're going to give a gummy to your child, you want to know that that product is what it says it is. So having the, all the certificate of analysis, the COAs uh, to show, and it's amazing how many don't do that. They don't care that it's out there trying to make a buck and they just throw it out there. And so it's, it can be pretty scary. So having those certificates of analysis to make sure that, hey, what we say is in the product is in the product. What's on the label is in that product. And so you can trust us that you're getting the highest quality product. Okay. Now, I want to take a little bit different spin on that because Jeff is the analytical one. When I started looking at Nass Valley after Jeff said, take a look at this, what I saw was a, an array of products that focused on the need of individuals. And we touched on this a little bit, the pets. There are people out there that will do anything for their pets, get them psychological help, get them chiropractic help. We've decided, look, let's aim at what the need is for the consumer. It could be skincare. There's not a husband out there that says, look, I don't want you spending money on skincare. But what they don't want is to find out that skincare is going to make their wife even worse than she was before. So we're focusing on the need, not just the desire. 
but the need of the consumer by bringing in those quality products. Because if they can trust us to deliver, then that's going to create shareholder value because they're not going to leave. They're going to stick with the product and love the brand. I think I think what is it? And the key the key is essentially is not to make a one time sale. The key is that recurring revenue that people you know the reorders that somebody's actually ha happy because I mean, yeah, I mean you really you can't build a business in this thing unless you have those reorders. You can't right. look at it. We're on. I mean, look how many just walk into a, a vitamin shop or a GNC. There are CBD products in there galore. Some from past companies that Jeff and I have worked with. Other companies. People are inundated and don't know. If we can provide a shop owner with the right education, if they can pass that to the consumer, then the consumer is going to say, I trust what I'm saying here. I trust you guys. And we live in a post-trust era. I mean, let's just look at the political crap that we all just went through. Nobody trusts anybody. It takes a long time to build that trust. If they trust their local shop, if that local shop trusts us, we're going to have that reoccurring revenue, which again, brings that shareholder value up. You know, it's it's a very interesting case. So I, I I think I'm kind of understanding why, uh, Michael. I think I understand why you you you've kind of gone with implementing this the direct sales thing. Because look, in this in the CBD space, there's just I mean, there there people are inundated with just so much noise in the market. Like, and and if there's if the consumer is educated by somebody what in a, in, a, in a store or in what or some setting about the, you know what what makes the product unique, what makes it special. It makes a big difference. It's sort of like, um, you know, you know, was it uh, Paul Mitchell? You know, the shampoo company. This guy originally, they from what I said, they uh, that business became a billion dollar business simply by that guy. Was it uh, the guy with the tequila guy? What's it? The the the, 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 the was it Jean Paul de Joria? That's the guy who was the he was the sales guy, and basically he went around to you know a hairdresser and said, "Hey, here is here." I, I think he. he I've seen interviews with him. He does like a demo. He says, "Hey, put this on your hand. Feel how soft the shampoo is. What the conditioner dries. Whatever his pitch was, but he got just you know thousands and thousands of you know of uh, these uh, you know hair salons, you know uh, haircut places uh, using the, his uh, shampoos and products. It was a direct. It was sold only at those places. It was never sold in stores. It was only sold in salons, and it became a huge you know multi billion dollar business." And, and this is the same thing you're doing with CBD. Essentially, you're the, you're the uh, like the the Paul Mitchell of the CBD space. Well, it's trust is an enormous enormous quality to have. Every single CPG company out there is dying to have their consumers trust their brand. Correct. So we have a, a fantastic model where we can actually go out with our associates. They're going to be talking to people that they know or in their network. And there is an immediate trust transference there. So if, if they believe in the product and they will, and they'll be knowledgeable about the product, they can pass that on to the, the vendor, the seller of that product. And immediately we create a relationship there that would be very difficult to do, uh, you know, strictly off of e-commerce or strictly from the shelf of a, of a convenience store, et cetera. So we think there's great value in creating this sales force, this national sales force uh, to not only to sell our product and create top line revenue, but create that trust in the brand and build our brand and build brand equity as we go. It's a much more efficient way of doing that, in our opinion. Okay, uh, we got a great audience question from Michael. He asked, "When can we see these products on shelves?" Website saying coming soon. Now, actually, Michael, you have in the back of you some of the products there. If you, I, I, have, I have a number of the products Ooh. behind yeah. me. I've got pet products. I've actually tried. I've actually I've actually tried. Um, what is it? You had those those. What is it, the hemp cigarettes? Like a smoke? Well, it was actually pretty yeah, good. Yeah, we have we have hemp That's smokables. Cool. Yep, I, that are a CBD product, no tar, no nicotine. Uh, we have uh, within the product we have uh, a click flavoring for for menthol and for cherry. So we have um, not only CBD tinctures and balms um, and uh, smokables. But we have shampoos, we have uh, anti-aging products. Uh, so we have a whole breadth of products that gives gives the Nass Valley Direct platform huge opportunities, we touched on earlier, to go into almost every single kind of retail environment and have a product that is applicable to that business, um, we, which is a huge differentiator. And I like what Troy said about that. We don't aim just to go out and and have our people 
lightly sell. We want to dominate the marketplace uh, with this model, with this B2B model. And we think there's great power in that. And as I touched on the numbers earlier, uh, we think we're very conservative with those numbers. We think we will blow that out uh, in short order. Now, it does take time. It doesn't happen overnight. But you know the exponential value of having a network sales organization in place. It can grow very quickly. And maybe, Jeff and Troy, you should talk about that a little bit because I'm sure the, your, your audience, Jack, wants to hear about that. That's Yeah, I think that's the thing. I mean, I think, I think what they want to know is like, how are you guys going to grow this, you know, the sales force, you know, you know create this exponential factor here. Um, so what's the plan? How fast? How soon can you make it happen? When, when can we see, you know, 10,000, 10,000 <laughs> reps selling like uh, even a thousand bucks a, a month, you know? Well, I, th I think, uh, you know, obviously that's, that's a crystal ball question. You know, you, you look at it, you know, we have relationships. People have already been reaching out to me. And, I, you know, looking at it from the associate perspective, I, I think they're, they're just a, they feel like they're, if they're in the CBD industry and they're passionate about CBD and they believe in it, if, if they look at the typical CBD company that's in direct sales, I think they kind of feel like now the whole world's competing against them. They can drive down the street. They see CBD everywhere. and They're not just competing against other direct sale companies, but they're comp competing against these other stores that are carrying it now. And, you know, they don't have the story so they can educate, as we've already talked on, about. But it opens up a whole new way for that for the associate to be able to go out now and that's what the people have reached out to me have been excited about wow i don't have to just rely on going to my friends neighbors and relatives i can actually go and have a model where i can go to their local uh, establishment mom and pop and it pays me a, a tremendous uh percentage and override in fact half of the percentage that we pay out gives them the opportunity to to get that in the direct sale which is a little bit different than what's paid out in, in tradi traditional MLM or direct sale. You know, they, they break it up even more and you get a little bit on the front end, but it's really set to build this big multi-level team. They can make a, a very, very generous uh, income coming in on a residual basis by going out. If they want to hustle, it's not going to happen just because you get in and set there. And I think as that story starts to get out there, say, look, this is a whole nother opportunity because there is a, a tiered aspect to the plan that does allow you to override people that you bring in. So as Troy said, it's a hybrid model. It goes after that direct sell, but it rewards people for sharing it and building a team as well. And I, that's, that's going to be the powerful message that goes out there and it's going to cause us to grow. Hey, they're different. They're not like this. You don't have to just go after your friends, neighbors, and relatives. You can, and, and we want you to, but you can go after and create a, a substantial income for yourself. And I think, Jack, part of this is going to the new model. You know, the last couple of three companies I've worked with dominate in their trends, dominate in their space, and it was because they were customer-centric. They wanted to make sure they were building something that the customer residual income would come in over and over and over. Michael touched on this. 2,500 reps is a baby company when you look at direct sales and all the hype that's out there. We want hundreds of thousands of people. We've had all these signups. I don't care about signups. I care about revenue. And if we can get the right people looking at this now, which we have, we have people that say, look, I am a small business owner. I need residual income. I've dabbled at that direct sales thing. But now I see something different. You guys are coming to me with quality products. A lot of times in direct sales, what happens is a compensation plan is created and then they look for a product with the margins to fuel the compensation plan. Nass Valley's already in business. They've already been selling product. They're already doing good. Now we're putting in a direct sales model. They said, look, we want to take it to the masses. We want to build something people say they are the prime company. They're the standard to look up to. So, you know, there's no crystal ball. I've seen companies explode overnight and I've seen some that should have exploded that died. And then you have those that are like Tupperware, Mary Kay, who consistently over and over and over can beat the revenue mark because they put the quality in the product and they build the relationship, both of their sales force and the customer on the street. And that's what our goal is. Okay. So, you know, it's interesting that this hybrid model, uh, it makes a lot of sense. It, it kind of, it's, it's sort of sinking in the, 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 you know, the power of this. So in other words, you're, you're going to go after these, let's say even in the pet category, because I just, you know, uh, and even in the pet category, there is, you know, 
thousands and thousands of small businesses. I mean, like it's very like people who, who are involved in pets. Like, I mean, where I live, like I see like every day there's like one of these vans that they do the pet washing, whatever it is, they do the pet like, right. grooming or something. <laughs> it's like three different they have these funny names. So I'm 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 assuming that anybody who's driving the van, you know, with a pet, you know, they're doing the pet, the poodle, haircut, or whatever in the back, they're probably, you know, they they you know they want to have extra things that they could sell and if they could have a a CBD thing for your poodle that it, the uh, you know to wash it or whatever that, that it doesn't get arthritis or whatever it is, the, it'll it'll you know it'll uh, it'll be very effective. These because these people you know they want to hustle. Well, let's take that and and let's actually look at that. Let's paint that picture. If you're sitting there trying to take care of a puppy, and that puppy is as anxious as its owner, and we all know pets kind of model their owners. Okay, if you give that pet a little bit of CBD and it calms it down and you're doing all of your grooming that needs oh, to be done. And then you say to the owner, look, this right here is what just calmed her down. Then you've got a built in sale that way. All of my dogs are trained from a protecting my children's standpoint. My actual trainer has said, Troy, I'll put CBD in my shop because this is going to help every dog come in here when they have the anxiety of the owners gone. Our dog went there for a month to be trained. These dogs don't know their owners. This truly is, there's so many different facets once a person understands where it's at. My chiropractor and acupuncturist, two different people. He said, hey, look, man, I'm gonna bring some products. I want you to check them out. Both of them said, oh my gosh, we've been studying up on this. This is natural to our client base and it will give us revenue. So yes, sir, that's exactly what people want, at least today. Maybe, maybe it wasn't that way 18 months ago, but these small business owners today are saying we need residual income without having people come into our shop day in and day out. Uh, yeah. OK, it's, it's I mean, yeah, that concept is actually starting to sink in because, you know, essentially these, these small businesses, you know, like, uh, you know, unlike Amazon, which which can do well without, uh, you know, without anybody, be, you know, because it's all online or But if let's say you're a chiropractor, I mean, you gave like examples, a chiropractor or, a, you know, acupuncture guy. Uh, hey, if he can't, uh, if he is not showing up uh, to, to his office, to the, 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 the clinic, he's not making any money. So, if, right. but if he's got, you know, uh, uh, you know, 100, 200 customers who are buying, you know, 50 bucks a month worth of product, you know, it pays the electric bill. It will pay the electric bill. And look at the array of products. You know, we've got over 60 SKUs, pets, skincare, the cigarettes. I mean, We've got a whole family. Take, take an individual. Let's say that an individual says, look, I want to live a healthier life. He's smoking four packs a day of cigarettes. What do you do? We can transition them into our products so that they start to get a different type of ingredient that's going in. That's the set. Nobody wants nicotine. I've got a 36 year old son's had two strokes in the last six months. And the doctor said it's because you smoke cigarettes. Guess who my prime prospect? I'm moving him into our product so I can try to save his life. More people mm -hmm. are going to be doing the same thing. Okay. Uh, let's get to some audience questions. we got Derek asking, uh, quality of the product. Do you have a seed to sale model? And where do you get the hemp from? Uh, all the hemp is U.S. grown, organic. Um, all the CBD is derived from that U.S. hemp. Uh, we do not have a seed uh, to shelf model. We do not consider ourselves experts in agronomy. Uh, we are a distributor, product manufacturer distributor. Uh, that's the knitting that we're very comfortable living in. We don't think that we can go out and uh, be farmers or negotiate with farmers. There's plenty of people that are experts at that. And we're more than willing to say that it's not what we're doing. We're, we're a CBD products distribution company and we're gonna be a direct sales company and we're gonna have e-commerce presence and we're gonna have distributors selling uh, our products into their customers. Uh, and we're very comfortable there and doing our projections and numbers. We don't have to, we don't have to get that little bit extra margin by growing it ourselves. Uh, our margins are plenty healthy, uh, not being a grower. Okay, uh, we get a question from uh, Joseph. I think Joseph is in Canada. Uh, he says he ordered the hemp cigarettes three weeks ago. Still haven't got. How long does delivery usually take? I think I think he's doing his due diligence, Michael. Right after you went on, I think he went. Uh, well, <laughs> that's very interesting, Joseph. We've got to get you taken care of because it should not take. You know, it should take inside of uh, ten days. Are you? Max. Are you? What about? I think he's in Canada. I'm pretty sure he's in Canada. 
if he's in Canada, well, we should be able to get delivery to Canada as well. So okay. uh, we'll have to take a look at that. Um, hopefully, we got a screen capture of his name, and we'll we'll run that down for him. Okay, okay, because uh, but but you're shipping. In other words, I don't know where he ordered it. Is it from this from like uh, online? You have because I think you have more. Yeah, we do. We and that's valleyproducts.com. Okay, is our online e-commerce site, and he probably ordered it. He's in Canada. Canada. Yeah. He's in Canada. Well, it might yeah. take a little bit longer. As you know, the border is a little bit confusing right now going to Canada. Uh, I've had, I've had, I actually shipped out, I was trying to ship something to, to you know, one of our subscribers in, in to Canada. He's in Canada and, you know, came back. I mean, it's the, like, the, like there wasn't enough customs information or it's something stupid. It was like, a, you know, it was an electronic. Yeah. Well, was ridiculous. The borders are difficult right now, even our friends to the north. Huh. Okay. So that could be, that could be a slight issue, but, uh, in the U S they should be pretty much immediate. Yeah. Within, within four or five days, anywhere in the U S. Okay. Okay. Maybe uh, you may have to like set up some sort of distribution in Canada so that you get it, you know, uh, instant. Right. Well, I mean, our carriers do deliver to Canada. That's why I'm very curious as to yeah. why uh, he has not received his, but we'll, we'll figure that out. Okay, yeah. uh, Joseph, email me. I think he's got the send me the thing, and we'll pass to Michael. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> he will, Please okay. do. Please do. We'll, we'll we'll get it figured out. Okay. So, guys, basically, how long? Um, I, I guess my question is, we're talking about, you know, the, the target is the twenty five hundred. You know, getting twenty five hundred distributors. You know, excellent. How long do you think it'll take before we get? Essentially, we're launching at the end of the month, right? How long do you think it'll be before there is that twenty five hundred? Of you know, people who are actually you know have traction in the market, they're you know selling. Well, we're entering the market at a good time. You know, the, the things are starting to relax a little bit from the pandemic. People are feeling better about what's happening out there. Uh, they're looking for something different because they just gone through something that's very scary that we've never gone through as a country. So people are open to something new, which helps. And so now that we're out of that and we're still in, you know, catching the tail end, going into the summer campaign as we start to grow, then you hit the fall campaign, which is starts at about September one through just before Thanksgiving. And that's the second biggest spread within the direct or, or category or months of that fall campaign to build within the direct sales industry. So I think we're, we're coming out at the right time. Typically you'd want to hit, you know, just after the winter before spring, but with the pandemic and everything going on, you know, there was a lot of uncertainty. So we're hitting it, you know, right at the right time, you know, how long it's going to take us, you know, we'll find out pretty quick. We do have some people that are very, very excited about it and building with it. And, and it's been very, very well received. So it shouldn't take us too long at all. Okay. Okay. So, um, okay. Michael, I guess the next question is, uh, are you going to be reporting on like, you know, some sort of the traction you're getting in the market as it comes in are like, can we see like you know, news releases? Like, I don't know, let's say once a month or so saying, Hey, we got X amount of, you know, distributors in our network or we got this. So, so people can keep track of that. You know, the absolutely. Absolutely. It's, you know, as a public company, we, you know, we want to communicate all good news and all news to the shareholders. Uh, and we will once we, we will certainly set up milestones that we feel are important for the shareholders to be aware of. And we'll communicate those probably just as you said, you know, every three weeks, every four weeks and, and keep them abreast of, of our product, uh, of our progress, certainly with the Nash Valley Direct platform, because uh, I think it'll be really exciting to follow for, have them follow along with the progress. And, uh, you know, I think they'll see our quarterly reporting and the top line revenue grow. and It'll make a lot of sense. Okay. Uh, last question. Two last questions, basically. Uh, this is to you, Michael. I don't know if you guys want to want to chime in, but okay. In terms of news flow for the coming month in May, what what other kind of news flow can investors look forward to? Let's say four to six weeks. Um, I think uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the actual the actual launch of Nas Valley Direct. Uh, we're going to be talking about um, our growth on e commerce. We have a couple of large distribution deals that we've been negotiating for the last two months. Uh, we hope to be able to communicate progress on those. Um, so, you know, without uh, disclosing things that I really shouldn't, I think it's going to be a very robust couple of months uh, of news. And we're really excited and, and nothing more important than what uh, Jeff and Troy are doing with Nass Valley Direct. I think that's going to be some of the most exciting news. Because it's okay. it's uh, it's eminently you know quantifiable, it's measurable, 
um, KPIs will come out of it and we'll be able to communicate those. And, and that's that's going to be really exciting for, for us and, and our investors alike. Uh, yeah, basically, we'll see. We'll see by uh, I would say by the end of June. Hey, is this working or not? Right. So Jeff, Troy, you guys, uh, you know, <laughs> everybody's everybody's uh, no no pressure, but everybody's watching. Right. <laughs> no pressure. Uh, so, I mean, you'll, you'll, oh, oh. Go ahead, go ahead, Troy. No, no, no. You go. You know, you'll we'll start to see traction right away. I, I a number of people who have been communicating with me saying, "Hey, when's when's it going to happen? When's it going to happen?" And so I just tell them, you know, we're, we're getting all the pieces together. We're working on, you know, finalizing the programming so that we can track everything for everybody seamlessly. They can view all their sales and the sales of their team from a secure login for back office. And so we're getting all those things that we need to have done. You have to build that infrastructure first and you have to make it solid. And once we get that in place, which we're expecting is going to be by the uh, the first week of June, uh, then we'll be ready to go. We can, we can flip the switch and then it's going to be about training. And we're already working on the, the training videos, going through the compliance uh, phase of those training videos, making sure that everything that we're teaching them is compliant within the law. Uh, so that we build a, a team of people that's out there doing it the right way. That was the worst thing that happens is, you know, if because if you don't teach them, they're going to start doing it on their own because they are entrepreneurs and chances are they're going to do it wrong. So it's up to us as a company to make sure that we're teaching them right. And then we have a compliance department that oversees that and watches that. And we're not to crack the whip on somebody, but just to make sure, hey, you guys are doing it right. You're not misrepresenting the, in the company. You're not making product claims, medical claims on the product. You know, take our product and, you know, you can sprinkle it on grandma's grave in a couple of weeks. She should be fine, a little skinny, but she'll be back you know, walking around. <laughs> well, we don't want any of that. So we want to make sure because that's not, it's not good for a shareholder. You know, they want to make sure that their company's doing it the right way. That's why we have certificate of analysis. I mean, you talked a little bit about, the you know the products and 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 why is it a little bit different you know we want to make sure that you know what we say is in the product is in the product you can count on us to, as a consumer to not only do the right thing but to deliver a quality product you know, every single time that you can have the convenience of every month the products you're in love with whether it's a pet product for your pets you don't have to worry about oh man i need to go run down here to get my product you know that's coming every month. They're your favorite products. And guess what? You may then you're in there and you, you get introduced to something. They say, wow, I didn't even know that. This works so well for my pet. Why don't I try it for myself? Or why don't I try it for my grandkids or my kids? Or wow, they've got skincare or they have hair care. You know, I like this healthy thing. I'm, I'm liking, I'm liking what I'm seeing. So it opens up, you know, it opens a door to the one vertical that they're passionate about. And then they get to uh, have a whole uh, suite of yeah. products. I think I think this is the this is the powerful thing of having uh, these sixty five SKUs because you know you have the, all these cross selling opportunities like you said hey if somebody comes in into the Nass Valley family so to speak through their pets because you know it calms their the, the poodle down and then they say hey let me try this for my uh, whatever my uh, arthritis or my uh, whatever it is you know the, that's how it happens or vice versa. And, and Jack, I'd also say this, you know, I don't want people to get fixated on 2,500 reps. You make no mm -hmm. money off of reps. You make money off customer sales. So those right. reps have to be able to go out there to those small businesses, to the individual consumers. Those products have to move. So we will have some testing going on during that first six months to where we're going to see what does work what isn't working, which ones of those SKUs are exploding and taking off so we can put more resources there. So let's, let's. I mean, we want the 2,500. Michael's put the number based on that as a sales force. But at the end of the day, it's how much revenue are we yeah. starting to bring in and how many of those exactly are right. actually staying. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. Last question, uh, Michael. Uh, yeah, our favorite question, question that we ask, I mean, you guys, if you want to chime in on this, but uh, yeah, our favorite question we ask at the end of every interview is, you know, in your opinion, top three reasons why investors should consider Nass Valley NVG stock today? Uh, I'd say, I think you're looking at two of the reasons why you should consider us. I think one of our biggest sales channels is going to be Nass Valley Direct. Jeff and Troy are so experienced in the fields of direct sales and CBD products. Um, so I think one of the biggest reasons is our team. I think we have a, a, a qualified, experienced, motivated team. Um, and that is essential when you're looking at any company. Who's running the company? Who is who's has the vision? 
uh, and what's their experience. We have that. Uh, secondly, I think we have an extremely solid offering. I think our products are second to none from a, from a quality standpoint uh, with the COAs, as Jeff talked about. Uh, and I think that uh, with a breadth of product, we, are, we could be the only CBD product uh, out there with 65 different SKUs for sale uh, in, so, in, a, in a variety of different verticals that, as we touched on earlier, it's not a one-trick pony. Um, and third, I think we have great upside uh, for investors to take a look at our company, take a look at our models, take a look at our projections, where we feel we may be in a 12-month period, a 24-month period, uh, from a top-line revenue standpoint, with our projected uh, margins, is only going to translate into you know potentially good news for our investors. So we're really excited about that. We're all invested into this as well. Uh, so, you know, we will share with that, uh, with the risk and with the reward, and we're looking strongly at the rewards. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Michael. Thank you, Troy and Jeff. Uh, we look forward to getting an update uh, in, in the very near future, hopefully with some big numbers coming in. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thanks, Thanks for having us all. Thank you.